Welcome to Lamp Post, where the Word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Here we are on a beautiful April morning in Erie, Pennsylvania. Today's question is, what is the difference between confidence and pride? Let's begin by getting some definitions of our terms. The word confidence in the Old Testament means to trust. It's what a man depends on as the loins are the strength and firmness of the body. It means to be secure. In the New Testament, there are three Greek nouns and two verbs translated confidence or confident. They have the following meanings. Persuasion, assurance, trust, boldness, good courage, and to affirm. The quality of confidence which leads one to stand under, endure, or undertake anything. The dictionary Noah Webster gives a definition of confidence as ground of trust, he or that which supports assurance, a trusting or reliance. We go to the word pride, we find the Old Testament, the word pride means to be lifted up, arrogant, insolent, puffed up, and it is synonymous with a high look. In the New Testament, the word pride means vainglory, haughty, high-minded, and boastful. The Noah Webster Dictionary definition of pride is inordinate self-esteem, an unreasonable conceit of one's own superiority, which manifests itself in lofty airs and contempt for others, insolence, and that which excites boasting. I think James chapter 4 verses 13 through 16 aptly illustrates the difference between confidence and pride. Go to now ye that say, today or tomorrow we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain, whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and vanisheth away. For that ye ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. But now ye rejoice in your boastings, all such rejoicing is evil. The difference lies in the foundation. One foundation was self, the other foundation is the Lord. The foundation of our confidence should be the Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, beginning at verse 10. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. The foundation of self creates wood, hay, and stubble that will prove unworthy of reward. The foundation of Christ creates gold, silver, and precious stones, which will secure rewards. Let's look at the word pride. Pride is having self as the foundation of our achievements and our accomplishments. Pride is glorifying in self and promoting self. Pride is trusting in and relying upon our own innate human attributes and abilities. 1 Corinthians 4, 7 says, For whom maketh thee to differ from another? And what hast thou that thou didst not receive? Now, it's thou did not re if thou didst receive it, why dost thou glory as if thou hast not received it? Pride is taking the credit for that which God has enabled and bestowed us by His grace. Everything we have, everything we are, is by the grace of God. Our intellect, our aptitude, our abilities, our talents, our natural gifts are all given to us by God. We have not created ourselves. Psalm 100 verse 3 says, Know ye that the Lord, He is God. It is He that hath made us, and not we ourselves. Nor have we endowed ourselves with anything. We can only develop and employ that which God, the Creator, has given us. James told us that glory in ourselves is sin. And Proverbs chapter 16, 18 says, Pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. And twice the Bible says God resisteth the proud. James chapter 4, 6 and 1 Peter 5, 5. 
Paul the Apostle, writing by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, in Philippians chapter 3, verse 3, said this, For we are the circumcision which worship God in spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus, here it comes, and have no confidence in the flesh. When our confidence is in our flesh or our natural abilities, we are thinking like and acting like the heathen who know not God. Paul again reminds us in Romans chapter 7, verse 18, For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. As a matter of fact, the natural man and his thinking and his ways are in contradiction to the Spirit of God. Galatians 5, 17, For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary the one to the other. Pride, therefore, is putting our confidence in and finding our confidence in our natural God-given attributes, aptitudes, and abilities without recognizing the Lord as the giver and giving Him the glory for them and their achievements. Pride is receiving to ourselves the glory that is due God. Pride is thinking of ourselves and presenting ourselves as superior and sufficient because of our trust in ourselves. Let's look at the word confident. Confidence is having the right foundation of the Lord Jesus Christ for all that we are and all that we do. Biblical confidence is realizing that our sufficiency is in Christ. 2 Corinthians 3, 5. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is God. Biblical confidence is knowing that we can do nothing to please God without Him. John 15, 5. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. Pride is the branch taking credit for the grapes. Biblical confidence is giving the glory to God for the grapes that He enables us to produce. Biblical confidence is knowing that I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Biblical confidence is knowing that everything I do for the Lord is not because of me. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And His grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. Biblical confidence is knowing that my victories are not because of me. Psalm 18, 29. For by thee have I run through a troop, and by my God have I leaped over a wall. Romans 8, 37. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Matthew 19, 26. But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Biblical confidence is knowing where to place your confidence. David, a, a great king and a great warrior, wrote in Psalm 118, verses 8 and 9, It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. Biblical confidence is knowing what is your confidence. Proverbs 14, 26, In the fear of the Lord is strong confidence. Dear Christian, if we are not careful, we can be guilty of sinful human pride when we boast of ourselves and take credit without believing in our hearts that we are what we are, and we have what we have, and we do what we do only by the grace of God. We are His servants and His workmanship. We are the sheep of His pasture and cannot boast or brag or take credit for the wool. Pride looks to self relies on self and glorifies self. Confidence looks to Christ, relies on God and glorifies the Lord. My friend, if you are watching or listening, please know that God loves you and wants you to spend eternity with Him in heaven. However, there is something that separates you from Him, your sin. Isaiah 59, 2 says, But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid His face from you, that he will not hear. See, the Bible says that all of sin and come short of the glory of God. 
and the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. The Bible says that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Won't you right now, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, stop and ask the Lord Jesus to forgive your sins and receive Him as your Savior? Will you trust what He did and not what you think you can do? On the cross, Jesus said, it is finished. Everything necessary for salvation to be accomplished has been done by the Lord Jesus Christ. And He offers you the gift of eternal life if you'll just receive it. The Bible says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Well, I hope I answered your question. Come back again next week for another episode of Lamp Post. Don't forget to subscribe so that you'll not miss a single episode. Until then, goodbye and God bless.